so what I want to do with this, um, I actually want to, I know we talked about a little bit of the arranging and stuff. Uh, what I want to do is have you go to where it says home on the ribbon at the top, home, and then go add or remove. What I'd like to do is just create, you know, a basic string ensemble. Uh, and to do that, we're going to need um, the basic string package. If you scroll down, you should see on the left-hand side a little, like, drop-down arrow that shows yeah. strings. We'll go ahead and build this whole thing. Um, some of these are, are um, like, the ones that say solo are built for the solo performance engine. Uh, whereas the, the other ones are set for sections. So what I want you to do is I'd like for you to choose violin one uh, uh, through, um, oh, sorry, violin one and two and hit add to score, just one and two for now. And then go to viola and add to score. And then the violin cello, which is the cello. And instead of the contrabass, we're going to use the double bass. And then it should look like this now. Where it says unnamed trouble staff, let's go ahead and just delete that from the score. It'll ask you, are you sure? And then you just say yes. And then you can hit OK. You get there? Yeah. So it basically looks like this now, right? Yep. Perfect. Okay. So um, for starters right now, we, we didn't really have the need to put a title in just yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically have you draw up some, some you know, very basic passages between these um, and kind of point out like how we would like to use these. Now, when we're working with string orchestration, typically the goal is to have the the bass specifically laying in, laying out the really low, um, not necessarily the roots, but definitely the fundamental structure of the chord progression. So a lot of times the the bass kind of has el more elongated passages. Um, they do become rhythmic, but a lot of times they're not like vastly arpeggiations uh, arpeggiated. Because they're just too hard to hear down that low. Um, a lot of your arpeggiated uh, individuals end up being people like the cello uh, or uh, the viola. Sometimes the violins, but a lot of times the violins get a lot of the sweeping passages. Um, they also get the more uh, melodic phrases. Um, and any of your main melodies might end up appearing on violin one, where your harmonies to those melodies will end up appearing on violin two. You know, so you kind of have to know from a from an overall standpoint where you start with these guys. Now, um, before we really go nuts and do all that, though, let's talk about some some basic uh, kind of scoring rhythms that you're used to hearing in things like your modern day films, and kind of talk about how to apply those kinds of rhythms to these um, these particular staffs. So what will happen is is the 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 easiest way to go about this, um, because it's not as easy to just play full hands uh, and have it all be applied correctly, is to literally go note by note, you know, for each instrument. Now we could play it, we could play it on the piano. Uh, we could also notate it by writing it in. Um, if we were to pick just some very basic patterns, though, we can write it on one staff and then have it translated and transposed to the other staff uh, or staves. Um, most of the time, I like to write to begin writing on the viola because it's like somewhere in between. Um, cello has a huge range. Cello by far has the broadest range, but it's still not high enough to really kind of see where we might be if we spill over into the violin. So it's a little easier to write on the, on the viola uh, staff and then have that split into the other staves. What will happen is if you copy-paste anything from viola into a different staff, it'll translate it to that staff notation. So you don't have to re-transpose it to fit, but technically you will have to transpose it if you're going to change the pitches or make some sort of augmentation to, to, if you like building a chord. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll start with single notes, remembering that, the, the, that these instruments technically have polyphony elements, meaning they can play more than one note at a time. 
But for the most part, the way that we like to use them is single note entity, so monophonically. Um, what I'm going to do is, is uh, there's two ways we can do it. We can input the notation um, manually, or we can play it. Um, and let me start with, and I'm going to go to, so follow me here. We're going to go to view, and then we're going to go to panels. And we want to make sure that the, um, uh, the keypad is engaged. It should be visible somewhere. Like mine's way off over here. And we used this last time. The easy go-to on the keypad is to hit escape if you get stuck. And, you know, use your, your undo if you need to. Uh, actually, before we move forward, go ahead and hit command S. Because this, this is one of those programs that doesn't automatically save as you go. Okay. Um, so first thing you need to do is hit command S and save this somewhere where you can have access to it. So I'm just going to throw this in my file real fast. 301. You can name it whatever you'd like, day five or strings or whatever. What I'm going to do is, is uh, remembering that off on the keypad, you could use any one of these numbers on the keypad side off to the right to select any of these items that you see up in the keypad area. What I want to do is build some just basic rhythms. And we haven't really denoted a tempo, but uh, it should have, it's, I think it defaulted to like 100. We can change that tempo marking. Um, and I'll show you how to do that once we kind of lay in a rhythm here. Um, first things first, I think, let's see. Um, trying to remember how this would go. Hold on, let me, let me throw something in here real quick. Sorry, I'm just going to think of a rhythm here that we can apply real quickly. Okay. There we go.
All right, so here's what I'm going to do. So what I did with this is I kind of added some rhythmic stuff here by using these dotted formats. Remembering that the dotted is adding half of the value of the, of the initial note. So um, I did these as, just because I wanted something faster and rhythmic, I did these as uh, dotted eighth notes, which means that their, their uh, tagged on note is a 16th. Kind of gives you that ba, 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 ba kind of vibe. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of start to split these out amongst the parts. But what I want you to do is, if you can, real quickly, you can just use the keypad. I want you to, um, to build um, this rhythm. All right, you can just, it doesn't have to be the exact same notes, but as long as you have the dotted eighth with the 16th, dotted eighth, and I had to do them one by one. I did a dotted eighth, a dotted uh, 16th, switch back. When you choose the dot, you have to hit the dot in the keypad, and then to deactivate it, you have to take it off. So don't forget to take it back off. Oops. Cool. Okay. So what we're going to do with this is uh, a couple things. Well, one, the tempo that this is set at is a little slow. So if we kick this back to the beginning, uh, again, it's a little slow. It's not really jumping out or doing much here. So there's a couple ways we can set this up. Uh, first of all, make sure with your play um, transport, you move to the front, uh, the beginning of the piece so that anything we apply is, is is happening at the beginning and then what we're gonna do is is we actually have to tell it that we're gonna you know want a particular tempo so it's kind of interesting how this works out uh, you can actually do the live tempo mode which is where you actually tap in the tempo as you go and and the problem with it is is that for when you're starting off with a piece a lot of times it's a little difficult to kind of get used to it's a little jarring sometimes so it's just easier to just go ahead and apply your tempo to the top of the piece itself. So what we can do here is, is uh, if we if we could do some of this from the file um, section here where it talks about like where we would like to start from our uh, for our basic score. And uh, let's see, we can do it from. Oh no, it doesn't actually have it. Well, typically I find the easiest way to, to have this go in, though, is based upon the um, uh, this. Where is it? Oh, it's in the text. That's why. 
Let's see here real quick. Okay, here we go. So right underneath in the text section here where it says styles, if you click on the style part, what you'll see is it'll say some common elements here. One of them is the tempo at the bottom where it says quarter note equals whatever. And what you do is you're just going to apply it here. The, the only catch is, is that when it throws you into this, you still have to hit um, uh, a specific tempo. So you can't really like tap it in like we're used to. I'm going to try, I'm going to try 160. Oh, although, hold on, let's see, metronome mark. Oh, there you go. Right click it, and you'll get a drop down. Now, the other thing you could do with these tempo markings is you could use the, the, um, uh, the Latin tempo markings, and you could use any one of these, uh, like if you want to do um, something more up tempo. Uh, a lot. This is actually set up in a um, uh, from fast to slow. Here we could do. Let's say we did. Uh, oh, actually, some of these look like they're mixed up though. Let's try. Like if we did Presto instead of 160, instead of typing in a marking. Uh, it should take over. Let's see. Done. Yeah, that's a little fast though. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to right click it, double click in here. I'm going to get rid of this for now. Just right click it and, and go to quarter note. Right, see where it says quarter note. And I, I think we can just do quarter note equals without having to put the, yeah, it looks like Looks like we can just do it. Use the equal sign. Yeah. Okay, try 160 and see if that'll work. Okay, all right. Seems a little fast. I'm going to change it to 130. Maybe I'll just go back to our Pro Tools default 120. Let's try this. It's a little fast. All right, that'll work. I'm going to just put it at 120. The thing about it is, is I'm going to need some... All right, so what I'm going to do is that in order to get this to kind of pop before I spread this out, and this is super important if you're like dealing with rhythms and you're like, I like the way that it sounds, and I like the I like the, the rhythm, but I already know I'm going to want to put some 
sort of uh, accents or some sort of dynamic markings on it. You're better off to do it before you split it up against the parts because as soon as you just break it out and onto parts, then you have to go in and do them all one by one. It's a lot more difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this group of notes. And what I'm going to want to throw in here are some uh, staccato uh, elements here. Let's see if we can get it from... I think we have to get it from the styles again. Uh, let's see, styles all. Actually, I don't see it there. Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this was right here. I don't know why I'm not seeing anything. Goodness. Oh, that's why. Duh. Sorry, I forgot they put it in. It's on the keypad. Now it looks like it's mostly staccato and this accent. So let's try, I'm gonna try applying this accent. I have the whole thing highlighted. Let's see if we get enough out of this. Otherwise I might go staccato. Oh, no, let me try this with staccato. Sorry, I think I'm liking this flatted version better. So right now I have the staccato laid on here. The only other thing I think I might want to do is from the performance technique, it's still a little, it still seems a little like legato for me. Uh, bump, bottom. And I wonder if from a performance standpoint, if we need to tell it to be a little, uh, more aggressive. I think we can get that into let's see, is it this one? Oh, here we go. Well, although these aren't uh shoot.
Uh, were you able to put in those staccatos with the accent? Yeah. Performance mechanism somewhere that'll give us a little more. Performance here. Let's see. Oh, that's why, I think, because uh, that's how we're going to have to do this. Okay, so if we go to the top of the bar, actually, it should allow us to apply it if we select all of this section here. And where it says Styles in the drop down underneath the mezzo piano symbol on the text ribbon, you click that, and this is where it kind of gets interesting. So see where it says, um, it, it, these aren't necessarily something we just pull from a menu. Instead, See where it says expression, and then it says technique, and then yeah. it says tempo. I think what we need to do is we need to tell it in the, the technique, which is just going to come up as a text item. We need to tell it what kind of uh, technique to play with. So we're going to go ahead and click it, and then right-click it. Once that, once that text box comes up, the text box come up, and then right-click it. Now, all of a sudden, you see a couple of different variations of the performance technique. Now, um, we understand most people are familiar with tremolo, pizzicato. Um, the difference here, though, is, is there's a couple of other really cool ones. Um, Arco is just essentially, it's supposed to be bowing back and forth. So instead of it being just one way or the other, I don't know if you're going to hear much of a performance change in this, but let's check it out. Wait, which technique did you want to uh, actually, sit tight. Let's see. Let me. Let's. Uh, let's see which ones we like first before you choose one. Uh, this one, Arco, just not tight enough. Uh, I think Consort's gonna be a little bit choked off. No, that might work just fine. Uh, sends a sword. Actually, let's try it with Davisi. And then what we can do from here is um, pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make all these the same notes so that I can repeat them. Let's see. Now that you we kind of have this established with the tempo markings, I'm going to copy paste. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to drop it down in uh, the um, cello. And I'm going to drop it down in the bass. Here's the only catch. Although they're moved, so you can go and copy paste that whole measure and drop them down to, to the below items. The only issue with this is that when we drop them down, um, that unfortunately they're represented in the same octave that they were originally created in. So what we're going to need to do is we're just going to need to drop them down the octave. Now there's two ways to do it. Um, you literally could, if it's highlighted, you could literally just grab the arrow key and just go down. Although normally it plays... Oh, hold on. 
there's something wrong with my volume. All right, were you able to copy them down there? Yeah. All right, now what I would do is just grab those. Let's just do a four bar. So you're going to go copy. And what you can do is if you copy all three of those together and you highlight four bars with, again, all, all three of their staves included, it'll drop it into that space. So it'll fill essentially fill that void. So if you look at it now, you have you know these, these uh, laid out. Now, they're all in octave sets, so it's kind of, I don't know, a little, I think it's a little too much, right? So what we might want to do is say, all right, well, let's let's leave the cello in. Uh, instead, let's do something with the low end. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to do just simple whole notes right now. So I'm going to choose... Uh, off my keypad, I'm going to just choose whole note. I'm going to do this down in the double bass. And all I'm going to do is add a series of whole note passages um, for the four measures. Oops. Although I think for these, I think what I'm going to do is All right, so, so far, this is where I'm at. I just added that to kind of give it something else. Actually, let me see. Let me try something else. Oh, no, that's why. All right, now the other thing I also need to do here is uh, the viola. I, when I originally created the viola, I think I set it to low. Where? So I'm going to try this up the octave. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I might re rearrange this element here. But now that I kind of have that, I have the bass line going down. Um, what I'm going to want to do with the violin one and two, right now I might just make them octaves, kind of keep it simple. But again, kind of elongated passages, nothing too 
Nothing too short. I'm thinking maybe some half notes. Oh, if you highlight the bar, go to home and hit delete. Uh, it's right in the middle of the screen where it says bars. As long as it's highlighted, you'll be fine. All right, so this is, all I did was kind of do a real simplified, like, come around. Some half steps involved here. Uh, I'm going to kick it back around and see what this is like with everything. That half step was wrong. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, so you can kind of just throw, all you did was some half notes and a, I did like a dotted half, the quarter. You can kind of throw up anything melodically up in the violin. I think actually what I'm gonna do is instead of putting the violin two in the part here, uh, I think I'm gonna go with, let's see how fast. All right, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is go with some quarter or uh, some eighth note um, arpeggiations to kind of fill this in. go with threes instead of fours. Let's see. Oh yeah, let's go with threes. So what's interesting about the arpeggiated pattern is I think what I'm going to do is make it feel like it's threes. So they're always going down. This will be interesting. I think I'm just going to go bump, 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 bump.
see where that leads us. Now the thing is, is the DVC, we may have to move this DVC's application to just being down here below so we can give a different uh, performance or, uh, enhancement or directive in terms of style to each of the different lines. So maybe the, the violin has more of an elongated line, more connected, and then the viola is a little more um, chopped up. Uh, let's see, I don't know if I can get away with... Pasting this here melodically or from a chord perspective, but let's see what this does. Uh, okay, so in that one, all I did, did you notice all I did was these straight eighth note arpeggiations? You kind of follow what I did with those? What I'm going to do actually is I might try this in the cello, just the, the arpeggiated form of the cello and see if we get a better fill out because it's kind of, right now it's kind of light. I might, for the sake of kind of adding some more style here, I think I might go with a tremolo for the high part. So I'm going to go back to technique, and in the DVC, I'm going to get rid of the DVC for this. I'm going to apply. Oh, although I might, sorry, I might have done it to all. Let me see if I did that accidentally to all instead of just the first line. Oh, I think that worked. Um, although, let me see here. So, bottom. Sorry, I'm just going to add some repeats. Let's see. So that this will kind of loop my playback without me having to manually do it. So I just, in the um, notation section on the notation tab where it says bar line here, I just did an end repeat at the end at the final measure and a start repeat at the start measure to kind of keep this going so I kind of, so I can move things as I'm going. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. I'm gonna open up the mixer. It's a little tab right here just so I can kind of hear what the, the balance of things is right now. So I think I need a little more for now. Um, questions on this? I think we're just going to take a quick lunch break and then come back. Go ahead. You don't have any questions? Yeah, let's take a break. Let's take a 30 minute break. We'll come back. We're going to add a little bit of brass to this so that we can kind of work with the
kind of how we would emphasize some of this, but how far did you get? Oh, I'm still adding the violin parts to it. All the elongated passages? I can, um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this out so that you can see it. 